What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. We're live, dude. We're back, dude. We're finally back. Sorry for my Ooh. absence. I just, the life's been hectic, but in a good way. What's up, bro? Uh oh, I feel like there's an echo. Is there an echo? Let me see. Hopefully, I don't have some bullshit open. Uh, nope. I don't have I think something. it's on my side. Cool. I think we're all good. Yes, dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh so it meant what's the what's the update from the last couple of weeks man dude so i um i here's here's what i think well first of all i just my like the podcast schedule kind of got shifted due to like you know change travel schedule and then like you know me kind of keeping all the stuff here on the home front kind of under control because I, I i have to go to new york now when i do mm -hmm. the podcast so yeah mondays have just it just worked out so where mondays were the best days I had to travel to do stand up. I think like the week before that, if not two weeks before. So and then there was like just weird travel stuff. So I kept just getting crushed on Mondays and Fridays with like stuff that mm -hmm. I had to do, that just fell right in the time frame. Um, so hold on one second. I think I got a package. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Someone's someone's going to get it. Um, so yeah. So I kind of got. I get there was there was like a, a you know a logistic side that was kind of fucking me up. But to be honest too, there was like, I was just not burnt out, but like. I'm, I was doing too many things at once, and mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't making any progress on any any like mm -hmm. viable progress on any of them. Um, so, so yeah, kind of like re I kind of regathered and regrouped, and I, I told you about this, Wes, but I, I started f like I kind of got this idea of something of like one of the millions of projects I had kind of open, you know, that I hadn't finished or completed, and I got a really yeah. good idea that kind of tied together almost. I sort of got like all of the psych null stuff I'm doing, all the Roma stuff I'm doing, all the comedy stuff into this like project that I think really truly unifies all of them. And that's mm. been, I, I've been really rocking on that lately. And, and I, I've set a, and you know, you know this, I've set a, a very strict goal because I want to get this thing out and done and finished and, you know, done well too. So, um, mm. so yeah, so that's a, so that's kind of the thing that I've been really going on. I'm, I'm going to figure out how to kind of still balance the other ones so they don't get completely sidelined and kind of like, you know, just stopped but that's right. something I'll be thinking of and figuring out. But yeah, yeah. So, um, is the is the Sh Matt and Shane's podcast is that permanently changed to Monday or no? I don't think so. I don't think okay, it cool. is. But I'm gonna, I'm going. It's just like the really, and even if it is Monday, it's not a big deal. It's just the drive to New York is the thing mm -hmm. that kind oh, of no, like no, I throws get it, it off. But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I will figure I'm gonna figure something out along those lines. It's really been kind of week to week due to like travel schedules and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, it brings up a really good topic. Because, um, you know, if I freestyle on this one a little bit. Sure, yeah, yeah, please. So Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are maybe, they might go down in history as like the world's best and longest partnership. Um, and they were interviewed on it one time and uh, they said, you know, what's the secret? Like you guys are both multi-billionaires and usually partnerships break up for whatever reason. You know, and they've been partners, I do. I think it's now for like, probably 50 plus years like something crazy mm -hmm. right um and charlie and warren said the reason for it was because they refused to argue but he's, he's like so if we got to the end of our careers well we i think they actually sat down and talked about this it's like if we get to the end of our careers and we were to review it's like there's probably only a handful of arguments that are going to knock us off course so let's just choose to not have those arguments and which which is in, which actually, from my opinion, from and from my experience from relationship um, therapy, they actually tell you to do the opposite. It seems like mm -hmm. it's, it, it's like everything that you feel, at least the impression that I get. It's like most, if not everything, you feel. Talk about it to your partner. You know, I'm feeling this. Like, you know, help me solve it or something like that. And which I can see is valuable, and I'm definitely open to that advice. However, I know that my inclination is to land on the Charlie and Warren side. Like if you're, if you like, so like if you're, if you have a good vibe with somebody, 
you are going to disagree with them or there's going to be periods of time where like now let's say with you and Shane where Shane's off and traveling and and doing all this other stuff and you know it would be understandable for a human in response to that be like hey man like the schedule is schedule like we can't do you know what I mean like they're that mm-hmm. could obviously lead to some sort of confrontation but if you just choose not to have that argument and trust in the longevity of the relationship that it will most likely work itself out now Warren and Charlie said that it's not that they don't have debates, but they have respectful debates. Like, hey, here's my opinion. Here's your opinion. And if Charlie wants to invest in a project and Warren does it, he goes off and does it. Right. So it's gotcha. almost like this, like, um, you know, this uh, like open relationship sometimes uh, for projects. Um, but they're both literally multi-billionaires. The other interesting part about it is Warren is many worth many times more than Charlie is. Mm-hmm. And. And I feel like that's because Warren has chosen to invest in certain projects where Charlie hasn't, but they still maintain their partnership. So it's very, very fascinating. Very fascinating. Yeah, it is interesting, man. It's, it's also, do you have a cold? Uh, a little a, a little tiny head thing. Gotcha, gotcha. I noticed that. I'm hoping um, it doesn't go into something bigger because I'm going for the streak. Since COVID, I have not been sick. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I, I've yeah. been doing pretty good. I don't want to jinx myself, but I've been doing very good with that, man. You know, do you take zinc? Mm, I don't. I probably should. Zinc is apparently is like a cellular antiviral, where like it, it, it inhibits <clears throat> viruses from replicating within cells and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, fine. I'm gonna do it right now, bro. I'm, t- I'm telling you, man. I, I used to hate the idea of taking a multivitamin. Ever since I started taking one, I like again, knock on wood. If my desk really? even is real wood, I don't even know what it's made out of. Um, yeah, probably not plastic. Uh, I, I, dude, I haven't gotten sick, man. I started There's taking a little Zycam action going. I think okay, that's zinc go. based. Probably. Zinc is, yeah. So, dude, I'm telling you, I, I've been forever. I still always laugh at multivitamins. I'm like, what the fuck? How can you tell me that some weird powder is better than eating, like, you know, all my food and stuff? But, you know, obviously the foods are important, but, dude, yeah. ever since I started taking that multivite, bro, it's like I don't get sick. Mm. Mm. It's pretty crazy. Again, I know I'm well, thinking to myself, but. Doom. I ha- let's say this I have not gotten sick since I started taking a multivite. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I can say. The whole sleep thing, since I've been starting to focus on it, I, I'm not even close to getting sick. My sleep has been fucked up the last two weeks from my injury. Um, mm. I've got to, I got to sleep on my back, and I wake yeah. up like four or five fucking times a night. Right, right, right. So, right. Um, but okay, so to your other point, yeah, dude, I mean, there's like, there is the, there's for sure a constant dance of like, and I think this is in emotional relationships too, of like, is this is this thing like is this say there was a thing that's like a slight annoyance or or just kind of like a let's say a discomfort is this thing like an actual deal is this like a deal breaker is this like crushing me or is this like is this like offending a mental model of fairness and what I think mm-hmm. that looks like so it's like you know I, I get into that with you know with Brit every oh, morning yeah. I was like, well mm-hmm. it's not fair it's like well I if I think about it I genuinely don't care so it's mm-hmm. like you know it's not something that bothers me mm-hmm. um, but. You know, but either way, so I, I do agree, man. I think there's something to be said for like choosing battles, kind of going long term and kind of being able to move through ebbs and flows without being like, what the fuck's going on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I also think it's probably important to recognize that they are both very much A players. Mm-hmm. And, and that's got to have something to do with it. When you know both people at the party are bringing everything to the game and they're and they have been for a very long time, even before the partnership. I've got to imagine that eliminates 60% of of normal conflicts because uh, of lack of sufficient skill in other relationships. Does that make sense? Well, yes. And it's also, dude, I mean, just to riff on that, dude, it's like the idea of bringing everything to the game, I think, is a good idea. And you, dude. I, I feel like you know when you're not doing it and when you are oh, doing yeah. it. And oh, yeah. when you are doing it, you feel good. Like for me, I should say, when I'm bringing everything to the game and I'm playing a game I want to play – that's it. I've, 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 I, like, I'm sitting down here in my basement just again. It's only been a few days. You know, I'm, I'm in a honeymoon phase with like a I, – I get like this. When I have a new project, I'm just like <gasps> – yeah. like I get so excited. And like – but, yeah. dude, I will say this has been – this one I, I think, you know, not to hype it up too much, but it's been a long time coming and it marries mm. a lot of my interests in one mm. particular thing that I really like. Um, so – but i just been in my basement, dude. Just like I'm just down here looking at my, you know – studs that a little moldy it's not the mold's not growing it's been contained. it was just because the wood was left out before it got built here but it's like dude okay. i genuinely there's nothing there's nothing i like better than you know 
the the project's a book, so I don't want to keep being mysterious, but it's like just writing, dude. Like I fucking love to write. And then when I get to write Mm. about stuff I'm also deeply interested in and that like I think has a, could have a meaningful impact. I'm just sitting here down in my messy basement, dude. I'm like a literal pig in mud, dude. Like you couldn't, Mm. you couldn't put me anywhere else where I'd be like any happier. Just, it can't be done. I love it, man. Figure that out, you know. Once you figure what that, that what, whatever that is, and you're able to show up 100 percent for that thing every day, I just I can't, bro. I, I can't figure out, you know. Like, there's few things I would say. Nothing for me personally, but I think there's few things better than that. Of course, yeah. Like you obviously want to do it like within the context of a happy, healthy family and all that other stuff. Um, but it's like, man, dude. Like you know when you're not showing up 100 percent, and it's like, yes. What are the? How can you? Do that because if you don't care about the thing that you're doing, you're not showing up 100%. Sorry, yeah. you're not. Unless you can flip it into like, well, if I just do this thing I hate and get extract the resources out of it so that I can go do do the thing do the thing I like. But again, for most people, it's this place sucks, this job sucks, this is unfair, this is bullshit. I guess I'm just gonna have to do this forever. It's like, or like, well, I'll, I should like get into getting, I get like a nicer house or something like that. And it's like all this stuff's fine. But it's like, man, if you really sh- find the thing you like to show up for and show up for that 100, percent you can't, it, you can't, you can't like fuck with that at all. It's insane. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Have you got gotten into the realm of trying to outsource more things, um, so you can fully focus on your core projects? Yeah, I've been starting to think about certain things that I kind of want to just let go of in that realm, um, but I have not done it yet to be honest. So it's like, I, I do want to, what are you of, thinking? If you don't mind me asking, uh, social media stuff. I want to kind of outsource that and okay. kind of be like, here's the filters for the types of messages I want to like strictly see and interact with, you know, check all the other stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. Not, you know, and it's like, and also I, I want to, and this is kind of a funny idea. I want to figure out, um, somebody to promote stuff for me, like get somebody from like another country, just like a, just a, some place you've never heard of and just pay someone and be like, Hey man, here's like, 50 bucks, the money means a lot to you. And it would be funny to have someone from like Tehran to be like, you can catch Matthew McCusker at, <laughs> or just like a big Jamaican lady. Give, reading out all my dates on a camera would be hilarious. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, social media is one of the things that I think kind of sucks a lot of my time, but I have been disciplined with it. But also it's still one of those things I'd love to kind of like, like here are the things that I would really like to see and interact with. You know, the memes and gifts are hilarious and I think they're funny, but it's like, here's a criteria for stuff that I want to see. That way, kind of the other stuff gets filtered out. Can I throw something out to you? Yeah. <clears throat> so, what I have found, it, so you're talking about outsourcing basically marketing PR. That, is, that, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, that's actually not too bad of a thing to outsource because there's a lot of like little boutique or just like one man shops of, uh, you know, social media marketing, blah, blah, blah. So, I don't think, um, I don't think that's a bad thing to outsource. What I would usually say, what comes up for me usually for entrepreneurs is the more technical, the more important the thing to the business should almost be the last thing to be outsourced, if that makes sense. And I would actually put marketing pretty importantly in your, in your business. Yeah. Um, but this, it's an anomaly because social media marketing has become such an important thing that there's a lot of people now doing it. But let's just say it wasn't social media. What I would normally recommend, not recommend, but what I would do if I were in your shoes is outsource all of the baseline home stuff. So eating, you know, ordering food in instead of making it. That, that I think is the, the biggest thing. As crazy as that sounds, that freed me up from like spending, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours a day around food prep shit, like cleaning yeah. up, like all that stuff. And it's actually super low cost. Right, because I would have had to spend money on food anyway. But then, obviously, if I'm purchasing it out, it's it's charged at a premium. But when I look at that premium, it's nothing relative to what I would have to pay on an hourly basis for a social media marketer or something like that. Sure. Um, so, for those of you listening who might not be able to or or a little hesitant to hire somebody part time on Fiverr or something to do your social media or your accounting or whatever the fuck it is, outsource your meals first. Like that's the lowest barrier to entry that I have found. And all of a sudden, you get an hour and a half to two hours back a day, which is fucking huge because then you can spend that on social me- media or accounting or writing, et cetera. Um, I think oftentimes as business people, we – it's hard, right? Like it's hard. Where do I spend my money? Where do I spend my time? And it's always that delicate balance in between. 
So, and oftentimes, like, I just had to fucking make a commitment. So I, funny enough, just hired a, a marketing firm and I'm paying them like 1700 bucks a month, um, mm-hmm. which is not an enormous amount of money, but it's not a small amount of money, right? Like yeah. way easier for me to outsource my meals, you know, and, and I'm getting like super healthy meals from, you know, from urban plates and from vibe and so on. Like these are crazy healthy meals. Um, so anyway, just some, something to chop on there. Um, but mm-hmm. I think if you can swing it, hell yeah, like outsource your social media, just don't be surprised if it takes you a while to find somebody good. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm I'm really just trying to. It's not so much that I mind doing it. It's just when I do it, I get sucked into all my rabbit holes of other phone oh, yeah. stuff that I'm trying to avoid. Like I actually like doing it. It's just when I go on Instagram, now I'm on YouTube. Now I'm like checking my email for the ninth time, and I'm like, dude, what yeah. the fuck am I doing here? So it's like, yeah, I just want to. I have been disciplined, so that is not. A, that's not really a bad idea. The other thing too, I would say too is like, you know, because it could get kind of confusing because we have talked before about like, you know, almost doing the opposite where it's like you're saving all your money. You're going and buying rice and beans and, you know, and you're making your stuff. So it's like I would just kind of to clarify there's for sure like different levels of things. And it's 100 percent. If you're again, if you're if your time's not really the th- of the essence, because maybe you're out on the clock at a job and you kind of have time to fuck around. It's like, you know, that's kind of different. And yeah, th- at that point, you kind of need money. So, yeah, just to clarify, it's like if, if you need if money's the thing you need, then obviously, yeah, don't do that. But if you're kind of comfortable and you're trying to get to the next level. Yeah, Wes, I completely agree. It's like, yeah got to get out of then you got to kind of start to shed that skin of mindset which is like how do i pinch every penny into being like all right now i got to start like putting money out to get money back in intelligent ways so yeah totally yeah it's that tim ferris quote in the beginning you spend your time to make money and then in the middle you need to spend your money to make time hey dudes sorry for interruption here just wanted to let you know if you want to join our pro team go to romas team.com slash pro you can help support the channel you will also get access to exclusive content masterminds one-on-one sessions etc all right back to the episode um so yeah and and recognizing that distinction is really important the other cool thing is is that you don't have to like let's say with the meals let's say you're just above you know your normal high water mark you have a little bit of extra cash flow coming in and but you're but here's the here's the contingent part you're hitting a ceiling at work or in the business or something and that ceiling is mostly done is, is mostly constructed of uh, of time constraints that is where you want to consider making the change but the cool thing is you don't have to like go all in it's like okay well if i'm noticing that if i spent an hour more of time on my business or in my career would it be valuable to me so tomorrow i'm gonna buy lunch right it doesn't have to be for the next year i'm gonna buy lunch i'm gonna buy lunch gotcha. tomorrow and i'm gonna focus on finishing that project and oh shit i got that i got on that project in an hour and now I gave it to my boss and it's looking like that if I keep on this, I'll get a raise. Right. So there's like ways of testing the water for that. Makes for sense. Sure. That's dude. I think that's a great idea too. Of even, even just building that into like, yeah, exactly. Like even if you want to try it one day a week and just see what happens, I think that's a yep. fantastic idea. Yeah. But again, it's, it's the, I am really, really kind of hard. The thing that I'm personally harping on is, is again, it's like having been let's say not showing up all the way for all my projects because again it was like i'm doing a bunch of stuff i'm I'm happy i'm doing them but it was some part of me that's kind of like i i have to start to kind like how do i say this i was happy i was doing things around my core interests and that was good but again all of that led to and i believe me like it was just literally like a a snap of the finger like oh my god that's what i this would be a great thing to do that like genuinely marries all of them because it would bother me all the stuff i read like you know, it's like, are you a laser beam or are you, are you like a, a gushing fountain or are you just trickling off into a million different directions? And it's like I'm trickling off in a million fucking directions. And it, it just genuinely bothered me. Yep. Um, so it's like, really, how do you honestly organize your life around the things that you like to do? And it, I, my experience is that like, and ho- I, maybe this isn't the case, but for me, it's like you almost kind of spend all that time like in that kind of confu- like that confused state is almost something you need to deal with. Is that if that makes sense? Oh, absolutely. It's like of just like I'm doing a little bit of this, I'm doing a little bit of that, blah 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 blah. For me, it really helped me kind of piece together all of these things and be like, all right, here's the project I'm working on, and this is the thing that like I'm going to see this one through and proudly stand behind it. So I love it, dude. Absolutely. And it's like, and it's in order to how do I say this? Uh, yeah, I really just want to harp on that thing of like, dude, are you showing up? Like, I you know I have the idea, but then the other part is like. 
how do you show up for that every single what does that actually look like are there metrics are there amount of hours you're working on like how do you actually quantify that and it's like i i would really urge people to like start to figure like even just to you know start the process of figuring that out it's not going to happen overnight but it's like man is that a sweet feeling when that kind of clicks Mm. Well, and I love the idea we've talked about before of picking a project. Yeah. I think, I think a, dude, if I had one message to get out to like a lot of college students that I speak with, they're all worried about their career and, and you know, what are they going to do for the rest of their lives? And I tell them constantly, it's like, just pick a passion project and, and, and complete it. And I don't give a fuck how long it takes you, like, but just saying I'm married to this project until completion and then you get mm-hmm. to figure out the dance that happens and all the nuances that you never would have figured out purely by philosophizing about it. I can't fucking stand that. Right? Like, mm-hmm. like the amount of people that I talk to, um, and I'm guilty of it myself too. I think every, it's a human condition. Like the amount of people that I talk to that talk to me and like 30 minutes inside of the conversation, I'm like, wait a second. You've never done this. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I couldn't tell until now that, that you're just talking conceptually about the thing. You haven't done the thing. Oh, yeah. So, And I see it in finance all the time. Like, Because I, um, I, I have the pr- privilege of mentoring some, some other people in finance. And I can tell when they start posing to me these hypothetical questions that because I've been doing it for so long, mm. I was like, okay, dude, like, it's a good question. But in 19 years of doing this, I've never encountered that question once. So is this a real question that you received or are you just making that up because you're scared of doing this shit? And dude, dude it happens all the time. Dude, I, I will say this as well. So again, writing is a very clear example. There's so much shit. If, if say you're mm. like thinking about writing, you can distract yourself endlessly oh, yeah. with the, you know, there's really good books to read on it. I'm not saying don't do that, but like there was someone I talk to every now and again, they're like, I want to write. I want to start writing. I have all these ideas. I want to write them. Like, yeah, <laughs> cool. Totally. Right. Like, um, so do you think I should take a writing class? And it's yeah. like, dude, dude, listen to me. Sit down on your fucking ass. or I use a standing desk. Or stand there and just fucking write 1,500 words a day. Just fucking do that. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done that for a while, then go start seeking feedback. Because I'm telling you, too, with writing classes, I've experienced this. They'll do the worst thing for you. They'll start hyping you up. Like, this is awesome. Oh, my God. Mm. This is all. Oh, this is great. And they start saying, like, Mm, man, I have. Do you know any publishers? I have, and like, dude, I'm telling you, they'll hype you up, they'll get you on the hook, and they'll start pouring that into your little ego. And like, I, this happened to me before. She read this thing that she was like, "This is great." Oh my god, I sent the same first draft to like a friend of mine who just fucking shredded it apart. And like, thank God he did that because I, if I had stayed with this lady and continuously paid her a bunch of money, it would have the, the book. I the first book I released would have been shit. It would have been so fucking mm. bad. But it's like, again, same thing. This person's like. Well, like, is it, what about this writing program versus this writing program? What about that? And I'm like, dude, have how how long have you sat down and actually wrote like written mm-hmm. for? It's like, well, I haven't yet. It's like, well, mm-hmm. shut the fuck up. It yep. doesn't. Ma- none of that stuff matters unless you're sitting there every single day writing. And that's like where my deepest life satisfaction comes from. I, I've come to recognize if I'm not writing for at least two hours a day, I, I quickly start to become kind of irritable and moody. It's weird. Mm. So oh, like, I could I could totally get that. Totally get yeah, that. Yeah, it fucks me up. I, I Whatever that is of like sitting there and like putting little things together like that, it, I like it. But it's like same the same thing applies to writing. Well, do you think like this, this like doesn't matter, doesn't fucking matter? Have you written today? No. Okay, then do that. Like that's all you got to do. Dude, I swear that, that thing that you just said, like the way that I think about it and just came to mind is uh, I get the same anxiety, like not anxiety, but like frustration. And it's like low key and it's not enough for me to even recognize what it is until I've had such a pattern. It's like, oh shit, um, I haven't been to the gym or I haven't done my work or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the best way I can think about it is like unprocessed potential. Like I think for men, we have this potential every single day and we have to spend it. And if we, if uh, unspent potential maybe is better. Um, so like if we don't spend it, then our brain almost at a subconscious uh, level like recognize it like oh I'm some version of a piece of shit today and now I'm going to take it out I'm going to kick the dog you know because I, like I, I haven't recognized it but there's just something in there gnawing at me that I haven't expressed my full potential today for sure I, I dude I think that occurs on a physical level if I don't exercise for long enough that like physical force that should be exerted just kind of like shoots back into my body and I'm like ah, I feel horrible and I, yeah I think it's 100% on the, on the like you know mental exertion like are you exerting yourself because you can have a physically hard job but if it's mentally, you're not, it's not using your mind at all, that can be fucking monotonous and like torturous to people. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. and I think you absolutely, I think you're 1 million percent right, dude, with that kind of unspent potential. 
We have mm-hmm. a, a daily allowance of physical exertion that we can use every single day that if we don't use it actually like is bad for our body. We have the same thing mentally. Are we exerting ourselves mentally with like, you know, pro- concepts and problems and challenging ourselves mentally? Are we challenging ourselves physically? You know, in a way where we're not like just devastating ourselves every day into like absolute exhaustion. But like, mm. yeah, dude, you're a million percent right, man. So there's, there are the two things for me. Am I working out? Am mm-hmm. I exerting myself on a, a, a meaningful project? Dude, if I don't do those things for long enough, I guarantee will be miserable. How do you feel about the Franklin method for writing? Because apparently, I think Ben Franklin could be wrong. I don't think he even graduated past like the third grade or second grade and mm-hmm. end up becoming one of the most prolific writers of his time, from my understanding, from like Poor Richard's Almanac, et cetera. Um, and apparently his method was if he read something that he liked, he literally wrote it out by hand. And I think he kept on writing it out by hand until he could write it from memory. And then eventually just kind of through that osmosis ended up adopting the writing styles of his favorite authors. Yeah, I always – it's funny. I always thought the Franklin method was when you just kind of – this, and I must have like – And maybe I'm wrong, this. by the way. I know no, he for he, sure did that, but maybe I'm wrong on the terminology. I thought, I thought the Franklin method was like taking a book and just like replacing sentence by sentence. Like you start to kind of change the names of the people. And then like, you mm-hmm. know, this person fell down a hill. It's like, oh, maybe they – like fell down a well instead and you start to kind of miss you kind of like you have the entire structure there and you start to kind of almost mad libs like the characters what they say what they do that's kind of I, i've tried it and I, it never really worked for me i didn't i don't like i, I don't know i don't like that but hold on did, did you try the replacing technique or you, yeah, did you the copying technique? just the mad libs yeah just like the mad libs version where like I, i'm like sitting with a book on my lap and i'm like da, 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 and i start doing it and it's for some reason i didn't work for, i could see why that would work though Oh, yeah. For me, this is the thing that works for me, um, is every book I read, I take copious notes on. Because then while I'm taking the notes, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm forcing myself to paraphrase what I'm reading in my own words, which then leads to kind of new ideas. And then I'll, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, that would be a cool book in and of itself. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, I could, it obviously worked for Benjamin Franklin. But the uh, yeah. And I think Ray saying it worked for Hunter S. Thompson, um, yeah. who wrote The Great Gatsby. Ray's getting feisty over there. Oh, he, you gave him his, his shirt. I'm, I'm going to bring him. I'm going to bring him on. But yeah, to answer your question, okay. it's like I've I've tried it for some reason. I like to kind of just. Dra- I'm a draft writer, which is apparently the most miserable way to do it. We just okay. draft after draft after draft. It's exactly yeah. the shirt that I would expect you to wear. That's no, no, nice. this, this is love it. No, no, this is my uh, this is Miami like. Um, oh, you're down in Miami, dude. Eighty year old Jew outfit. <laughs> how's, how's Marky Mark doing, bro? <laughs> oh, he, no, he, you know. Um, Ever since that, the, I got a letter from his lawyer. Like, it's, <laughs> I mean, a hostile, a hostile letter. From Why'd you get a letter from Wahlberg's lawyer? No, I'm just kidding. No, I, he, he, um, oh. I saw him at the, uh, I saw him at the Breakers last year, and I just like, I saw him through the window of his bathroom. I stalked him like Rambo until I got <laughs> until I got a picture. <laughs> but There's but now you, now this. you're looking now you're looking good, dude. Yes. I was, I was thinking. I was thinking. Like, you know, <laughs> yes. first of all. Get, I should have requested get an XXL. I should have re- requested an XXL. Yeah, you requested it. Um, dude, look at that thing, man. Dude, it's a work of art, dude. Oh, dude, that is a oh, Matt, that is a beast of writing, a shirt, bro. You should be doing. You should be doing like bootleg <laughs> concert tees and selling them outside the stadium. I should. You know those guys. <laughs> that is my true calling, honestly. I oh, so, so, so instead of making these for the dogs, Matt, what I was thinking was, whenever a new dog is crowned. I will send him this T-shirt, and when a new dog is crowned after that, he will send him that T-shirt. The traveling they will shirt. send them that T-shirt. Yeah, well, like that movie, the sis- the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Um, there you go. Top five. Never to be watched. Movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. Uh, God, I want to. That's I immediate make banning. One that's on-site banning if you watch that movie. Um, <laughs> I want to make one of those for myself so bad. Those things. Are, that is a sick shirt. I gotta say, dude, I'm it's, it's my to design. be earned, Matt. I know, I know, I know. But God damn, that's a beautiful shirt, dude chalices yeah. i'm looking at like why do i like it so much like oh i made it it's chal like chalices horses <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> dude that is legit man ray oh, how's the scale doing brother well dude um uh it's um none of your damn business wes i see that it medium was, bro that's not that's no, i know dude <laughs> it's it's definitely medium on the sides here no no i'm, I'm in i'm in, i'm at my mother wash place in florida and the scales yeah. Um, I think is it possible that both scales are broken, dude? It's like almost. I don't know. Yeah. This one, this one, I can. This one, I can doctor though. So this one, I like. Well, that's from the uh, 1920s. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So um, <laughs> I, lo- I dropped three pounds first day, but mm. then um, that must have just been like gas weight or something because I'm back on – it's back on today. And, but, I mean, that was tra- travel day, you know? Like, you know what it's like, Matt, or, you know, like – I have I have a I policy, Ray. I have a policy where I, when I fly, I wholly, to my best ability, and I'm like 95 percent successful in this. I wholly abstain from eating anything in any airport. Oh, that's a good rule. Man, there were these mini pizzas though, and they were <laughs> Nothing, basically dude. like they were basically like nacho chips. You know, you just flip them in your oh, mouth. Yeah. And so anyway, so I, I'm back. I'm back. I'm, I'm back up, but um, you know, a little bit. Hell yeah, but, get through um, it, bro. No, no. Of course. Wes, I got like a week and change. A week and change. I'll be like, I'll be like making weight on the on the wrestling team, like on the exercise bike with the towels over my head. How's Marky everything Mark else going? All this? about that, bro. Everything sure. else. I mean, things are good. Like I've, I've been like, you know, I'm prone to depression, so like I have to be honest that, like, the depression has kind of like um, been kicking up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I found myself like always exhausted, always wanting to nap, um, having trouble getting out of bed. So, um, and I think I have to, and so that is the, that has been dogging me. And um, so that has kind of impacted my productivity, my ability to um, fit into my clothes and stuff Dude, like that. For sure. But so, so on, the, on the, on the, uh, yes, yeah, so, so Wes, Wes was um, roasted me on on the Monday pod, and uh, I committed to losing ten pounds by New Year's, and just like um, taking ownership of you know my mental health, and so like I, I doubled up my meds, my Prozac, and uh, I'll get around to checking with my doctor, but um, it's uh, yeah, and so I'm just battling it. Go ahead, Wes. Yeah, dude, and and Ray, I appreciate you always being super candid. Um, and I would love to have at some point like have a roundtable discussion, just like we did with the AA stuff, right? Um, with because the steps. yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Um, because I would love to have genuine conversations around that. As somebody who does who's never struggled with something like that, I feel sure. like it's yeah, I feel like it's part of like the bro science you know uh sort of genre to, if you don't have depression be like oh dude whatever just go just go fuck you just go man up. It, right or something like that yeah just you know in. yeah so snowflake so i asked this question with complete empathy and non-knowingness um mm-hmm. do you find that there's an inverse correlation with like work effort and getting shit done and depression like the more work you do the less depressed you are or or is it completely non-related like i almost think of like okay if you can put yourself in a distracted progressive state would it yeah. minimize the effects but i have no idea you know like that's just my hypothesis what what has it been like for you no well it's it's kind of like a vicious cycle i mean if i can just approach it that way where it's yeah, like yeah. if if my depression starts kicking up i don't feel really enthusiastic about healthy eating and exercise right mm-hmm. and then after a week or two the bad diet and the sloth lifestyle compounds the um, the depression. Like I lose the the mental health benefits of healthy eating and and, and exercise. Got it. So um, it and it's true. I, I'm sure it's true of my work output too, right? Where um, I tell my you know like in in terms of sales, like right if I if I stop kind of showing up for myself, obviously sales are going to dip. And then I convince myself that I'm never going to sell again. And I just mm. have to be like a, like, um, kind of like a, what would be the word? Like a kind of like, um, you know, dumpster sex worker or whatever, you know, like, yeah. but, uh, so, um, yeah. So mental health, um, definitely is worsened by like, um, not showing up for work, not exercising, not eating healthy. Got it. Yep. So, so if, if and let me know if I'm hearing this incorrectly. It sounds like it's somewhat of like reciprocal determinism, and then it builds into like this snowball type of effect until it's overwhelming, and then the fact that it's overwhelming makes it more of like that sort of a thing. Yeah. Right. Like a feedback loop. Yeah. Got it. <clears throat> it's so yeah, I guess so until it gets so bad that you end up getting this like perverse moment of clarity where like I gotta turn things around and you get to be That's like, yeah it. I get to build myself back up again. You're like nice. Yeah, that happened like last Sunday at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. and I was like mm-hmm. I gotta snap out of it. 
and I started like sending all these work emails and Sarah's like, could you, I mean, why can't like, why can't 10 PM be 10 AM? You know, but, <laughs> yeah. but that was, that was my, like, that was my like rock bottom moment where I was like, you know, it's been a week since I promised myself I'd kind of like snap out of it and do all these things. And so, um, yeah, so it's been about a week since I've been crushing veggies. Hell yeah. And, um, you know, doubled up my Prozac and everything. And, uh, yeah, made a couple of sales. A um, couple, of, couple of, like, a uh, couple of, like, not, I don't know what you call it, like, when someone says no thank you or someone, like, doesn't answer. Mm-hmm. Like, Injection. three or four sales texts in a row. You know, um, it's a slump, bro. Yeah, it's a slump. yeah, or a hard no. It's a hard no. Hard no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> but um, or let's go. <laughs> which is actually, yeah, but which anyway. is actually a good thing. Yes, because it's the maybe. Yep. It's the maybe that that Twilight Zone maybe is, which is worse. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm battling back, exactly and I right. um, I will be skinnier on December 31st. Um, major win is that like I've been like um. Tom Brady promised Giselle he would retire 45, right? Which occurs about three weeks, three months after the Super Bowl this year. So I'm down in Florida and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing the New Orleans Saints on the 19th. And so, mm-hmm. like, for the last two months, I've been talking to Thea. Thea, wouldn't it be like every daughter's dream to go to a football game with their dad? <laughs> you know, and then, like, after two weeks, then we're saying it out loud in front of mom, <laughs> you know? And so I finally got her to relent. After he had kind of started crying in a restaurant, being, but I want to go, you know, T12 <laughs> is like on top of the AFC, AFC East. And so you're the um, puppet master. That's right. Dude, so that, that, so that, um, so fingers crossed, but that might be a major, um, a major win hmm. to go to, well, a, to go to an NFL game with my daughter. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that, oh, that will yeah. be, that'll be fun. Here's a question. This is what I'm curious about. I, I kind of practice this myself. Of like, what is there, and you know, and, and I, I, the depression thing is kind of a puzzle. Is like, how much of it is like a biological mechanism? How much of it is a biological mechanism caused by certain thinking patterns that elicit certain mm-hmm. feelings and blah blah blah? Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can you pos? Is it possible to next time the the telltale signs are coming? It's like you know, I wake up yeah. and I'm kind of like, oh, I kind of want to eat shitty food. Is there a way to almost treat that process scientifically where you almost observe yourself going through those, that, that kind right. of thing? And it's like, what would it be like to just do the opposite of what your depressed mind tells you to do as an experiment? As I know when you're depressed, it's just like, oh, fucking shut up. I don't care. That's a dumb idea. But it's like for me personally, it's like when I can kind of thwart that by like, like, fuck it, I'm just going to run. I'm going to run. I, luckily, I get to the point where I'm like, I'm just going to, like, run. I got to, like, try to physically shake this off. Uh, just run away. Just yeah, run literally. away. It's just like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to just make myself be tired instead of sad. And it's yeah. like, you know, how yeah, do you yeah. kind of, because, like, what Wes is saying, it's like, and in my personal experience, everyone's different. It's like, you know, you can't, mm-hmm. I can't speak to someone else's, like, what they're experiencing. But that's like, that helps me to be like, just almost start to observe it and be like, yes, here we are again. You know, and it's like. Right. Well, if you take the depression out of the equation and just think of it like, what does a guy typically do when he detects a medical issue? Does he go to the doctor Mm -hmm. or does he just say like, um, you know, or does he just say like, this is my secret or this is like, you know, I'm a real man. So I'm just going to let this cancer ravage my body. Mm. Yeah, dude, I I had a, I had the other day, I, and I know I get this. I get similar things. I start craving, and this is interesting too. Apparently, sugar is uh, it, it kind of what is it? It's like it, it in order for your brain to produce serotonin, it, like it helps to have like excess sugar, some kind of weird thing like that. Sometimes you might be almost unconsciously like seeking sugar to kind of create some happiness mm. chemicals in your brain. Hundred percent, all the time. I I noticed. Uh, I can relate. Dude, I, I like I was proud of myself. I started working out every day this week. I have five. Dude, I've got the man row. tits to prove it. <laughs> Dude, I have. This is the way my brain works. So I'm working out at five days in a row. I'm like, man, I'm feeling good. This is great. At nighttime, I'm going. I should have ice cream. I should. I've worked out. I should have some ice cream. And it's I know that after I eat it, I go. I don't even really like that. Like, what was the point mm. of that? I just ate a bunch of sugar. Now my mouth feels weird. Mm. Um, 
And it's like the, there was one night this week where I denied myself ice cream and I got like sad. I was like, I'm not going to ever have ice cream ever again. Like being like, <laughs> really? And like, and like, <laughs> like, I have to play this game with myself. This must be what like, the Holocaust felt like. <laughs> 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 I had to play this game with myself where it's like, you know, I hear in my mind, like, you should have ice cream. You need, you kind of, you need some extra you calories. There's cream. all the crazy shit. You need extra calories, dude. Blah, blah, blah. And then you earned it. there was a part of me where my whole body was being like, you're making the wrong decision by not having ice cream. There's a part of me that goes, I'm pretty sure if I wake up tomorrow and realize that I didn't eat ice cream before I go to bed, I'm going to be pretty pleased with that. And I have, there's like a part of me that has to kind of act in against every single mechanism of my physical body and most of my mind and be like, no, this, this weird, sad feeling of not had like, I'm not giving into it. I'm going to go to sleep. And then you wake up and you're almost like pumped. You're like, hell yeah, dude, I didn't give into that. Mm. And it's, it's a hard process to describe, but yeah. Who's the number one team in the NFC East? Um, Arizona. Okay. Forget it. <laughs> you're not coming to the game. Failed. Failed. <laughs> Dude, and Gunther's saying this is the reward mentality I used to do with addiction stuff. It's like, dude, it is. It's like, I've been, I haven't done X, Y, and Z in 30 months. I can have a beer. Let me yeah. a beer. I can have a beer. Come on. I deserve, I should have, I need a beer. That's like, the I, des- the I deserve is a, oh is a big boy. one. Yeah, man. I try to, I really try to cut that stuff out. And that's, that's the, that I deserve thought to me, for, for me personally, is the exact bridge that keeps me exactly where I'm at. It's like, you know, I'm working out five days a week. I'm doing this. I'm making progress. But then my bo- some weird part of my body's like, let's achieve equilibrium instead of progress. Let's eat some ice cream to counterbalance all this exercise. That, and that way I'm spinning yeah. my wheels. And it's Sabotage. like, I always, and I think, I think of that old Kung Fu. I'm like, that old Kung Fu master dude who's like completely ripped at the top of a hill. He never has ice cream ever. And it's ever. like, the thing about like Native American warriors. I'm like, those dudes never, like barely had salt. Or syrup. It's like, like they had to make maple syrup. If they wanted to taste sweetness, other than eating berries, they had to fucking cut trees open and make syrup. Dude, it's imagine like, the LSD trip of like eating syrup for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, well, you know I'm what, like, Matt? Um, it's interesting. Um, on the scorecard practice squad today, we we're listening to Mark Manson for the learning yeah. segment, right? Mm-hmm. The co-author with um, mm-hmm. Will Smith, and he said like the word crisis is overused these days right a mental health crisis you know climate crisis covid crisis red zone defense crisis like the and then all the and the emotional stress that comes from it but what behavior a behavior crisis leads to an emotional crisis so what you're saying is like and what you're both saying is like um good behavior will lead will is your best defense again um, against um feeling shitty you know like yeah. So, like you said, like um, uh, not eating that ice cream is going to make you feel way better than eating that ice cream. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> it, it, it and it does. It just takes the, to the next day to get. You don't. Get, it's not an immediate reward thing. And also, this is a yeah. this kind of. I don't know how this fits into this, but this is a, a thing I came across today. And I'm not sure if it's legit or not because I was looking up like mental health statistics today while I was writing this thing, and. You know, and, and everything you read is like, you know, suicide's on the rise. It's up 30% since blah, blah, blah. And I'm right, like, you know, right. that to me worked for the thing I'm writing. So that narrative of I'm like, hell yeah, mm. plugging it in. But then I looked at, and again, it, this could not be the case, but I looked at a suicide from 1950 to today. And apparently when, when you use the thing of like, you know, suicide deaths by 100,000 people, mm-hmm. it's actually <laughs> been pretty consistent since 1950, which is like, that was like kind of mind fucked me. And I was kind of like, let's leave that out of my narrative because it doesn't fit with the thing I'm trying to write. But it's like, yeah, yeah. that kind of fucked me up. I was like, really? I was like, this didn't, wasn't like, that. didn't that not used to happen back then? And now it's like more than ever. And it's, it's, it's it, it has been up. Didn't it we has invent been suicide? <laughs> yeah. It has been trending upward, but we've been going through these up and down since 1950. It's been going up kind of where it is to like above to where it is today. It's gone down a couple of years and it's spiked back up and gone down. So it's like, I don't know if that's comforting or not comforting, but it's also like, you know, to me, I was kind of like, wow, that's, that's nuts. Like, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, like the same thing. Like I thought we were in like a unique position of like mental suffering and anguish. And it's like, no, apparently, apparently mm-hmm. not. Apparently you know, the so great yeah. depression. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <No>. exactly. <laughs> apparently, yeah. apparently there's something to that great depression there for 10 years in the thirties. Yeah. Plus, as a little side note, you always have to be careful with data just because I look at data every day. Um, you know, 
you have to do it by a certain number of units because obviously the population has increased over time. But then also you have to factor in like there's a lot of misrepresentation of data, especially like the longer in history you go. Yeah. Right. So like, were they actually calculating these things um, back then? You know, so so true. that kind of mind fuck you as well. No, that's true. That is true. And I was kind of like, I went that far back and was like, oh, that's that's kind of nuts. But either way, that that's kind of neither here nor there. It was something interesting I came across. But yeah, dude, I totally agree. For me personally, it's like, you know, left to my own devices. And, you know, I've talked about this before with like, you know, following the senses and kind of chasing pleasure and all that other stuff. It's like, I typically end up in the same place, kind of like listless and kind of like, what the fuck am I doing with myself? But if there is an external structure I can kind of follow and just defer to in those times of like, should I have ice cream? It's like, well, does that fit with this external structure of like goals and all this other stuff I plug myself into? It's like, I'm going to sit there. I'm going to sit and be kind of bummed out about the fact that I'm not having ice cream and kind of just, just trust this external structure and like, you know, let myself kind of like you were saying earlier today with like, you know, almost partnerships. It's like, how do I allow myself to ebb and flow through these kind of periods of depression, these periods of anxiety without allowing those feelings to make me just completely like tear down all the stuff that I've set up already. Mm. And it's like, it's tough, dude. It's tough to do, but I, I think you can learn to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Been, what are your uh, thoughts on that? Well, I, I think I just wanted to add to that, that the, the, um, the Romas team is a big help because when I think of like depression or when Gunther mentioned addiction or even like, you know, um, eat it, whatever, Matt, you're like eating a bucket of Ben and Jerry's and falling your eyes out or whatever. Not These are man. all like yeah. <laughs> isolating behaviors, right? Like depression is isolating behavior. Addiction is isolating behavior. Mm. Um, and so like another antidote is the accountability and the support system of the, of the team. Yeah, absolutely. Totally can understand that. Now, like Ray, um, and please push back because I don't know what I don't know. Is mm-hmm. like, ha- is there a scenario like where you've actually measured it? Okay, I feel, let's say, quote depressed. Um, and I and the only reason I use air quotes is because I don't know, like I can't know necessarily what that means. Because you might be saying yeah. in your head, like, no, motherfucker, like it's not that I feel bad. It's that like something that the chemicals on my brain will not allow me to feel good. Like this is an entirely different thing, you know. Um, but let's say if when you define depression that you're feeling that way, have you tested like, okay, like I hate this right now and I'm going to hate it, but I'm going to go to the gym for an hour and then retest how I feel after. And please, I don't want that to be offensive. Like I'm asking a very primitive question. I'm just trying to understand. No, no, no. Yeah. So like, um, I'm thinking like long-term, like mm-hmm. not fitting into any of my stylish clothes, mm-hmm. that's a good metric that something's wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like having like fewer and fewer and fewer um, wardrobe options. And then, like, if I think of the times in the last two weeks where I haven't taken a, a, a nap, you know, morning, afternoon, both, um, do I feel kind of like sleep deprived at the end of the day? No, I don't. Mm. So it's just it's so like um, so that the sleep the sleep quotient um, is is one way to measure that like um, that it's just like it it, it um, the the desire to sleep is a me- mental impulse mm. right and then I can and, and so like at the end of the day if I'm like if I did not take those naps I got some stuff done um, and the head hits the pillow. Um, that's a way of that's a way. Um, does that answer your question? So you're saying the naps are an indicator that something's kind of a miss, right? And and also the na- the, the naps don't re- like I don't um, the naps do not solve the tiredness. Yeah, got it, got it. And when when they diagnose you as a doctor, from your experience, mm-hmm. do they go through a list that you think is sufficient? Like so, for instance, like. Do you eat properly? Tell me what that eating is like. Do you sleep properly? Like how long and so on? Do you exercise? Tell me what that like. Do they go in depth or oh, is it God, more no. of a shallow list? That's fucking crazy. Yeah. How? Yeah. How is that a thing? Yeah. What? What? Like so? So tell me what? What's the criteria? Well, I mean, that's Sarah. Sarah wants me to go to visit her naturopath for for this reason, right? Mm-hmm. It's because like what the naturopath does, they usually start with like a allergy test, right? And then they, um, they can see like what foods you're eating too much of, what foods you're not eating enough of, and 
your vitamin um, deficiency as a result, right? And so I've only been to one doctor in my life that said like your vitamin B levels are like super low, mm. which is like uh, and and you know that the benefits of vitamin B it's like, it's like drinking coffee, right? So like yeah, so that could be a huge part of the feelings of lethar- lethargy, you know, feeling of lethargic yeah. and all that. Yeah, vitamin D can do that too. But yeah, dude, I, I it's yep. funny that runs in my family. My mom's side low vitamin B, and um. I had to, and it was, it was funny enough. I'm taking vitamin B would kind of make me feel like spazzy, and yeah. like it was just like I didn't like it. And I just forced myself to take it in smaller. I take small amounts every day, then mm-hmm. then I'd slowly increase it. Now, like I, I say, that made a humongous effect on my uh, on my energy levels. Just and take, what's I, the um, what's the one you take at night? Zag or Zam or something? I was taking yeah, it, it. was just zinc and mag. It was just zinc and magnesium. Yeah, I was man. taking that, but yeah. apparently I looked into. And is that for your boners or what? What's that? So no, zinc and magnesium was just to I, I wanted to take magnesium because apparently magnesium also has been found to have um, if you take certain kinds that cr- cross the blood brain barrier to be like pretty instrumental in kind of uh, like moods and stuff. They found it helps mm. in depression and anxiety, but you have to take like mm. magnesium glycinate or some kind that crosses the blood brain barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, just like in the fact that you need magnesium to construct certain types of neurons or whatever. Um, but apparently zinc and I, I think. Sad is just saying it's been destroying his stomach. Zinc, you pay, I, I don't think you need a lot of zinc. Like those zinc supplements that I have gives you a little bit too much. Um, so I, I've read into that and it's like you get a lot of zinc you get through food pretty easily because it's, it's in a lot of like meats and stuff. It's just, you know, if you're sick, it's good to uh, supplement with it. But so I, I've been kind of backing off the zinc and really it's just the magnesium and really just getting like a, just a multivitamin where I know I'm getting is like, I don't, I'm, I'm, Maybe I have some deficiencies, but they're not as bad as they were before by any means. So, yeah, I would definitely go that route. You mm-hmm. get some intense dreams, brother, just as a heads up. Well, the ZMA, At least yeah, I did. Like I said, the ZMA, get, I, I kind of did take it, honestly, for that partially for that reason where I kind of like <laughs> having vivid dreams. So, dude, it's, it's intense. Like, At least yeah, it's pretty nuts. Experience. But to be honest, dude, I'm like, I would just go with a, like a good multivitamin, make sure you're taking the right kind of vitamin B, which is like the methylcobalamin or not the uh, cyano. Apparently, cyano is not as good for you. So, like, you know, I have a multivitamin that you have to take four of them a day. So I started taking one a day, then two a day, then three. Now I can take all four. And are, so. are they the big yellow chalky ones? No, they're they're little powder guys, like little capsules okay. with powders. Yeah. So, mm. so yeah, man, I I would definitely I would I would go the route that your wife's suggesting because it's like, I've seen the other route just kind of fluctuate and stay the same for people a lot so it's like i, I would mm-hmm. i would try the naturopathic and then you know try to maybe blend the two but it's like i, mm-hmm. I think that's like what's the saying dude it's it's a crime that that's not like a you know seven page analysis that they do over four months it's just kind of like here you go so <clears throat> yeah ray i would love if you kind of kept us in the loop and documented that journey like if you do go to naturopath like what like, what are the questions they're asking you what because I would, I would love to do it myself i've never done it I'm right. going. I've been yeah. to one. And I loved it. I got to. I got to find a good yeah. one around here and go to one. So that's that's on my radar as well. Awesome. That was a guy who I went to, and he was like, "Do you have any food allergies?" I was like, "Not really." He's like, "Like," I was like, "When I drink milk, I get really congested." He's like, <laughs> <laughs> "So that's one." Yeah. Yeah. So when I drink milk, I can't breathe. But this. What about gluten? Know. Okay, that's yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. That, that one I found out. I did tell him that one, but I was just like, "Yeah, just gluten," and I was like, "Nothing else, just you know." And that's yeah. But either way, so yeah, dude, I would. uh Highly recommend that man of just like setting up the regimen, like trying to see how long you can kind of not get bucked off the bull and just kind of stick to the system and just kind of sit there and withstand those kind of negative and kind of like depressive emotions. Because like it's real, it's a real thing, but it's also, in my opinion, it's like it's like a bucking bronco. And if you can strengthen that muscle of like I'm doing this regardless, I think it. I personally think it shortens the episodes and the intensity of the episodes. Resilience, mm. you're right. It builds yes. resilience. Yes, I think mm. so. So, yeah, yeah, right. Also, I, I, antidepressants can. Sorry, Wes. Also, antidepressants no. can increase appetite as well. So, there's that double-edged sword as well. Specifically, carbohydrates. Yeah. Let's look into that. Um, and they they can wreck your boner. Yes. Too. So. Do they? Wow. And, and yes. Yeah. In some people, and also like Propecia for like to to stop hair loss. Um. Can wreck your boner too. So, yes. I, I was at boner. marriage counseling <laughs> with my wife and the marriage counselor, and, I, and so like, 
And so like, so what are you going to do, Ray? And I said, I'm going to have like a full head of hair, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be like a fully hirsute flaccid king. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my choice. You know, head like a fucking chocolate lab. Well, there here's the inter- here's the interesting question: uh, How does Sarah feel about that? Because that's a very not, interesting dilemma. She, she's not having it, bro. Really? She's not. not having it. Well, because I, mean, I could totally see some females saying, like, you know, like I want you to look a certain way out in public because that gives her a certain amount. Do you know what I mean? Like, I could totally see an argument for the other side as well. I know, dude, but she also wants to <laughs> hang on to the bucking bronco as long as she can before she gets oh, thrown get it, off, man. right, Matt? Sure. I get it. I mean, you could wear a prosthetic, just strap it on. <laughs> <laughs> on the backside, maybe. Is that how you produce baby number two, Matt? Congratulations, oh, yeah. by the way, brother. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Nice. Thank you. Oh, did you tell everybody? Yeah, I, I, I did say it. Yeah, I did say it. Okay, cool. Yeah. We're in the safe zone now. So we're okay. in the safe zone. That's fantastic, dude. Yeah, the, congrats, brother. Far enough along. Thanks, man. I told, yeah. yeah. Well, dude, um, Ray, thanks, thanks for uh, sharing, bro. Um, yeah, man. It's yeah, this kind need of this. stuff that helps men make progress, you know, because yep. nobody fucking yeah, talks about this stuff. Dude, that's why I'm dude of the month. That's, that's true, right, man. That's true. And I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be significantly lower when I hit the scale uh, on December 31st, 11:59 West. Yeah. I haven't seen no, yeah. I haven't seen you, but have you posted any weight like pictures of the scale yet, man? I was no. looking. No, so yeah, I, need I to... didn't think so. So just so everybody knows. Um, <laughs> Well, so my, my weight <laughs> is um, three and a half pounds down, um, but my scale here at my house doesn't work anymore because apparently if you don't use it for a while, here like it go. just fucking breaks. Yeah. Here no. So I, I weighed myself yesterday. So I'm 173.8. Nice. Yeah. So that we'll, we'll capture that. And then next time I'm at my girlfriend's place, I will, or I'll have to buy a new scale for here, which is that actually that's what I would do. I will buy a new scale for here. So that way I don't have any excuses. There we go. Yeah, I'll yeah, start so, doing it again uh, so as well. Gibbons, Gibbons saying I'll buy you a Renfo scale for Christmas. So Gibbons, that's actually the scale that I have. I loved it. <laughs> for anybody who has a Renfo scale, just be careful. If you don't use it for a while, apparently it just fucking breaks. Like quite literally. Like, well, so if you leave dead batteries in there, which maybe it's just a true mechanism for any appliances, I don't know. But like literally, it won't turn on. That's weird. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, John so Walter was telling me he's down to his lowest weight as well. Oh, oh that's hell awesome. yeah, man. That's awesome. I feel like I got down too low personally. I was down to the point where it wasn't like I, the weight was too. It wasn't that the weight was too low. It was that I was not eating enough, and I was just like no energy. So now I'm back up to like uh, I'm staying around like the higher 170s because I was creeping into the lower 170s. But it was through like I was just like fat, not fat, like holy fasting, but like one meal a day and like mm. purposely just not eating enough because I was just kind of into that. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm my goal is really to stick right around like the mid 170, like 175, 177. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm right on it, dude. I'm not eating any fucking ice cream, dude. I don't care what I think while I'm watching the Da Vinci Code after working oh. out four <laughs> times in a row. That's how they get you, bro. <laughs> I know, I know. So yeah, dudes. Well, let's do it, man. Let's pray. Snap right. out of it. Knock it off. Fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm dude of the month, dude. Come on, start acting. Seriously. Like yeah, man. Look at that fucking T-shirt. Now that's dude of the month. There's you know there with every wave. There's the fucking swell underneath it. So dude of the month encompasses yeah, dude. all. That's dude, right. Let's go, dude. With- you know, heavy is the head that wears the T-shirt, man. See you on Monday, guys. <laughs> All right, bro. All Let's right, dudes. Go. Have, have a great weekend, weekend everyone. Have a great week. Oh, yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, have a great weekend. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. All right, peace. Later Talk on. to you soon.